Hi, my name is Fredrik Alexander Jean, but I'm probably more known by my hacker handle stick. And when I'm not helping secure Fortune 500 organizations by finding security vulnerabilities in the web application or creating cybersecurity related content on YouTube, I'm passionate about helping organizations just like yours to level up their security posture. Okay, so most of the things that I do tend to be quite technical, but today I'm trying to demystify and simplify some of the tools used by security professionals and cybersecurity criminals to identify and find vulnerabilities in internet facing assets. And the tools that we're going to get a little bit of a grasp upon today are readily available for anyone to use. And it doesn't cost more than a couple of hundred bucks a month or so to get all of them and be up and running. So it's a very, very easy step for you to get starting today on attacking your organization to secure your organization on a budget. But before we dig into all the hacking and fun stuff, I need to ask you a genuine question. And that is, have you ever used the password more than once on two different websites? I kind of know the answer because I know I did. And, and, and I realized that the hard way because suddenly one day I got a ding in my phone, a, a two-factor authentication login that wanted me to approve a login to a service that I didn't log into. And the only way that I can figure out that that was happened is that somebody got a hold of my email address and my password. And there had been this breach lately where a lot of, yeah, a lot of passwords and an and, and email address had been um, exposed. And I know I was a part of that. So, so the first thing I did was to, of course, change my password. And I got a little bit worried. So I changed all the password. And, and if you're like me, you're maybe, maybe you're one of those persons that just had your password listed inside a, inside a book somewhere. That's not really the best idea. I, I would totally recommend you to get some kind of password manager with a two-factor authentication so you can generate unique passwords for all the sites you use and then also have 2FA globally on all those sites. Because even though we're going to take a bit of a 360 view on how you can identify the assets and potential weaknesses on your organization, there is probably a higher chance that your organization is going to get breached and hacked by somebody either sending a phishing email or brute forcing a password to get access to whatever service that want, they want to get access to. And there is this old saying that says, whatever goes on the internet stays on the internet. And th that is actually quite true. Because right this minute, there are like thousands of scanners just running all over the internet and trying to identify IP addresses and ports and, and what kind of services and stuff that are running. They're run either by malicious actors or by organizations that just want to see the internet data and the flow that goes on. This is normal. This stuff happens on the internet. And maybe you're one of those persons, just like me, that likes to put stuff on the internet. I, I put stuff on the internet all the time. It could be a web service. It could be a, a it can even be a NOS like this one here, like, like a classic NOS. So this one in particular, it, all you need to do is to put some disks in, boot it up, smash in the ethernet cable and voila, you're, you're kind of up and running. The challenge with stuff like this is that they are not always hardened by design. Some are, some, some aren't. Like the default password for um, a QNAP like this used to be admin admin. That, that was kind of the password that was in it. And there's thousands of devices on the internet that has that admin admin password still available. There's also loads of them that has file shares publicly available for anyone to view. Because at some stage, whoever put that online wanted to share some files and photos from their, I don't know, their adventure and ended up in sharing it with the whole world. Because whatever goes on the internet kind of stays on the internet. QNAP has lately uh, secured their solution a bit. So now at least we know the password is the first MAC address of the Ethernet card, which is probably not brute forcible at all.
Okay, anywho. So if we were curious to see how many of these devices that are actually available on the internet, we could use a really nifty search engine called Shodan. And Shodan is just like Google, but it, it means that it indexes and, and identifies stuff and that are available on the internet. But in this case, it's primarily focused around capturing IoT devices or servers or ports and that kind of stuff. There's even this term called Shodan Safari, where you'll just browse through different services that are available on Shodan and find anything from webcams that are aligned to actually like wind turbines that are available with admin panels straight into the internet. It's it, it's quite a ride, to, to be honest. But if we would search for, let's say, uh, any certificate that has any device that has a certificate with the name QNAP in it, it would be it would mean that we will look for devices that has that self issued certificate that a QNAP NOS would create. We will find about three hundred thousand devices available on the internet. And if we also would like to break that down a bit, we'll start to look for, let's say, port 137 or port 445 to see if there's a file share enabled on those servers. If it is, and it doesn't require any kind of authentication, in theory, and I mean in theory, accessing this device would be a crime. You're not authorized to access it. But in theory, you could read whatever kind of stuff that's available on that box. And you don't want that to happen to you. So a very good thing for you is just to Google yourself using Shodan. Look for your certificates. Do you have a, a certificate name or organization name that you can look for? And maybe see what, what stuff do you have that's available for Shodan to identify and then adapt accordingly. So one of the first things that I do when I'm approaching a new target or working with the client is to get an idea about uh, the kind of assets or the organization and tools and services that this organization uses. And a very simple website that will help you to get a really fast overview is a website called DNS Dumpster. So just type in the domain of your organization, or in this case, we're going to do Visma.com. And what you'll see here directly is that we're going to see what kind of DNS servers they're using, what kind of MX records they are having. In this case, we can see that Visma is apparently using Gmail as their email provider. We can also see the TXT records here, uh, which, which kind of tell us that they're also using at least some parts of Office 365 or maybe Azure, since the MS equals uh, identification number is here in the text record, which shows us that they have verified their domain with Microsoft solutions. So they are definitely not only working in Google space. The rest of the stuff we see here is subdomains, and subdomains are other assets that maybe they are running different kind of services on. And subdomains are very, very important. That's a big part of identifying what's going on, because the naming standard of a subdomain could kind of give away how the designers or the developers or the system architects are thinking. Just by looking at the names of the subdomains will give you an idea what kind of services they are using or running. And another nifty way to find what kind of um, DNS records they're using is to use crt.sh, which is a transparency certificate lookup service where you can just type in the domain and it will show you all the certificates that has been issued to that organization. Even those that are self-created in, uh, let's say, AWS. So it's a very simple way for you to get an idea about all the subdomains or assets that either your company is using or that somebody else is using. A very interesting thing we can see here directly is one of the DNS servers that are being run by Visma in this case seems to be self-hosted. And if I'm hosting a DNS server, it probably is going to contain the assets and domains for the organization that I control. Google will have its own, right? And, 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 and there's a big chance that Visma is hosting things that belongs to them and not my stuff. So if we're using another free tool available by the creator of 
DNS dumpster called hacker targets find shared DNS servers. We can easily just type in the name of the DNS servers and see all the other domains that have a relationship to that DNS server. And in this case, there's going to be a lot of probably new or old companies that Visma through the years has acquired. Some are probably legacy and not being used anymore. But this is a really good insight for us because if we're doing a phishing campaign, it's always helpful to have as much data as possible around the target. Let's say that you wanted to contact them and say that blah, blah, blah domain is about to expire. Please click this link to verify or that you're saying I'm, I'm, I was the previous owner of blah, blah, blah company and I need uh, help to identify certain stuff. And it's also a very good repository to find domains that kind of look like a legit domain because these are probably already trusted domains that will be um, very easy to spoof and use uh, when you're attacking somebody. Because you would be amazed how easy it is to fool somebody to click a link if the domain just looks almost, almost as close to the original. And buying a domain, yeah, that doesn't cost much. Okay, so we have now collected all the subdomains, or at least part of them, the ones that we can find. We can find even more by brute forcing for more subdomains, but that's a totally different approach. Our next step is to identify what other kind of assets belongs to this organization. And since we know Visma is quite a big organization, they, there's a big chance they also own a couple of IP networks. We can then use a service called ipinfo.io, which is super nifty and API based. So if we just type in visma.com here, we're going to get all the ASN networks or IP ranges that are directly connected to that organization. If we save all these IP addresses, we can now start to port scan and see what kind of assets are open and available for us to access in those ranges. We know that these belongs to Visma because they are the authority of those IP ranges. So we will definitely just stay inside scope. But it's also very interesting here. If we wanted to do this passively and not be actively just poking the services to go back again and use a network search uh, filter on Shodan to see what's running on those services. And then passively, without ever, ever touching any of the servers, get an idea of what our next step would be in the attack phase. And this is information that's going to be around for a very long time, most likely, because there's this other service that I'm a really huge fan of, and it's archive.org. And it seems like it's just a repository that caches and stores websites in their current state. And, and that's actually what it is. But it's a very good way to use that to find information that you're not actually supposed to find anymore. Maybe that you're, maybe you published some stuff on the internet a couple of months ago and you now deleted it because you realized that the stuff that was on that website is not something that you're proud of, or maybe it's even some documentations in PDF file that you realize that you put up there that needs to be removed. That is most likely going to be indexed by the Wayback Machine at archive.org. So I challenge you to check out your own internet history by typing in your websites or some of the subdomains that you identified on archive.org to see whatever snapshots or indexed files that you can find there. There are some games to be found. That's true. But I hear you say, I don't host anything. I don't own any of my own uh, IP ranges. How would that be a problem for me? I have everything in the cloud. Well, there's another service called recon.dev, which does all this identification and scanning for us. So it continuously just checks the IP space of Amazon and some of the other cloud providers, checking the certificates and seeing whatever stuff is running on those and gets, it gets that into a database. For a few bucks a month, you can make a query to there. And since IP addresses change really fast online, it's a very good way for you to just identify assets that are running in the cloud. And 
hey, it just takes a query. You don't need to scan the whole address, address range. Recon Dev has done that for you. Okay, since we now has identified all the assets, we know what kind of ports that are running on our services. We know the subdomains that we collected and we know what kind of third party services that our target is running. It's now time for us to scan our infrastructure to see if there's any misconfigurations or if there's any known like bugs and CVEs in the network. And I can hear you thinking like, what? Should I just run all this stuff against my infrastructure? What if it crashes? Don't worry, somebody's already doing it for you. So it's better that you know what's going on than just realizing later that somebody else has just broke into your network because they are not going to ask for permission. Scans run all the time. So you can either use uh, really high-end solutions like Nessus or other services, maybe even get Detectify to look at all your assets to see what goes on. And they will create amazing reports for you that you can get your security to go through. But since we're running on a budget here, we uh, can use some of the work that's been created by the Bounty community. And there's a group of people called Project Discovery that creates some amazing open source tools that does a lot of these things for you for free. So one of them that I will recommend you to look into is called Nuclei, which is a template scanner. All you need to, to do is to have a Ubuntu box or, or some kind of Nix box that you're running Go on so you can use this template. And then you take all the subdomains and you take all the templates that they have available for you because the templates contains new CVEs, there's going to be misconfiguration, there's going to be a lot of stuff that other people would be interested about your organization. And it's always better for you to know that to what they could find and what they're looking for. So then you just take all, all the subdomains, you th throw them straight through Nuclei using all the templates and just hit your own infrastructure and see what I, whatever comes out. Because if there are some critical CVEs in there, you kind of need to start looking at your logs because then it's a big, pretty big chance that you've already been breached. And we don't want that to happen, do we? So yeah, check out Nuclei. When you've done that scanning and you identified all these admin panels that you have hanging out there and you tested to log in with admin admin and the def default passwords that you have on your appliances and stuff, um, it's now time to take it one step extra and it's to identify your weakest link, the humans. So we got this, it's time to look for leaked passwords because passwords, like I said in the beginning, are from breaches. And you can get these by downloading them off shady internet sites or you can use a, a service called Dehashed. And apparently they got about 15 billion password that are collected through breaches. And it's a really simple user interface to use. It doesn't cost much, about $5 for a week use. And you used to get a snapshot of your organization, see what kind of email addresses and passwords that has been leaked is a really good way to know your security posture. Because if you're a CTO or some really important C-level person is on that list and they haven't changed their password, you kind of need to go to them right now and change their password for them. That, that's how it works. And if you got some cash to spend, why not get yourself or your team a couple of Burp Suite licenses? That's a perfect tool for you to find vulnerabilities in your own web app facing applications. So just fire that up, crawl the website, and then just run the scanner that's included in Burp to identify all the low hanging fruit that you potentially could be at risk with. And you're also going to be a better buyer because you know what kind of stuff you have. And it's going to be easier for you to ask that organization that's going to help you with your security posture out by saying, we have done all these things. They are super cool. We use these tools. How could we be better at the things that we do? And one thing that keeps a lot of people up at night and what drives worry and anxiety is lack of certainty. What we don't know, we worry about. It's like 
when you have to pay your, the tax man, right? And you don't know how much money you're going to pay. You can worry about how much money you need to pay the tax man. But as soon as you know how much money you have to pay, then you can just get a plan, get that cash and pay it off. You don't even worry about it anymore. It's just a new goal for you. The same thing is with your internet facing assets. And I'm talking about everything here. It's the services that you use, the users that you protect, the stuff that you put on the internet. Because as we learned today, whatever you put on the internet is going to be fined by someone at some time, sooner or later. So I hope you got some ideas on how you can attack your own organization and level up your security posture a little bit. Um, if you want to know more about the things that I do, you can always head over to stokefredic.com. There's a lot of educational videos about tools that uh, I use and a lot of bug, bug bounty hunters use as well. So that could be a good place for you to start if you're not really invested into deeper security issues or work. So, but until next time, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around. Take care.